Good afternoon, and welcome to episode 23 of Will You Review My CV? I'm your host, Alan Wozni, and today I'm highlighting a career advice, a career advice number 20, 429 that I submitted on the LinkedIn Premium Career Group on 14th of October 2021, just the last year. Barbara Bartlett had submitted a post indicating that he was relocating to London and hoping to secure a role in cybersecurity. Now, I am by no means, I'm by no means a cybersecurity expert, but I felt confident enough to provide Robert with some ideas on how he could improve his chances at securing a role in this field, at least better than applying to open roles, which he indicated his efforts had been unsuccessful to date. You know, the cybersecurity landscape is constant, constantly evolving and the threats to online safety will always exist. Mainstream media news headlines will most likely feature high profile attacks on major corporations, major corporations such as Toyota, who was, they were hacked in 2019 when the data from 3.1 million customers was compromised. Maybe financial institutions will be reported in big hacks or big companies in the uh, FinTech space. Like the 2019 hack of over 100 million credit card applications that were, were for, through Capital One. Cryptocurrency hacks. People may be familiar, if they're not familiar, there was the well-known Mt. Gox Bitcoin exchange case in 2014, that was a long time ago, in which over 850,000 Bitcoins were stolen. Now just imagine, at that time, that stolen Bitcoin was worth approximately 450 million. Today, uh, today, today's Bitcoin prices, that stolen BTC would be worth nearly $40 billion. Other attacks include major, inf or ma that you'll see reported in headlines, include major infrastructure or tax on major infrastructure, such as water and energy. Like the colonial, last year, the colonial pipeline, the ransomware attack in June, 2021. And that, that, that actually, I guess they didn't, they didn't anticipate that, but it shut down and caused oil prices to go up for a short period. So sometimes, though, it is the smaller attacks that go unreported or do not get the attention that the major, the major attacks get um, or a large number of people don't get, aren't aware of. For example, the territory of Nunu, Nunavut, Nunavut, Nunavut in northern Canada has a population of less than 40,000 inhabitants. They reported a ransomware attack in 2019. And it's, they, had a, they had an attack on its online government services. There was some kind of malware titled Doppelpamer and included ransom calls that ranged between $18,000 to $930,000. You can imagine a small community like that. It's a government uh, with 40, 000, less than 40,000 uh, people population. That, that would have really had a huge impact. Another example uh, was from an AT&T cybersecurity expert. I listened to this a couple of years ago during a podcast, and the woman's name is Bindu Sandarisan. And she said that over 300,000 new malware strains are generated each day. Now, I, this was a couple of years ago. That could be much higher, that number. She talked about it, the referred to as a hacking as a service or HASS where it offers hackers, hackers, offers them malware user guides, malware guidance, malware training advice, the stolen IDs, usernames and passwords. Hackers can even access refunds, <laughs> just, like, just, like going to, just like go to Amazon or the store for a credit note for faulty malware. Imagine how much hackers spend in time and, and money on such malware. Bindu Sarisan says, not much. As little as $50 for the latest kit and very little time hacking. And they get customer service. Even the dark people, even the bad guys get customer service. So in my view, Robert Bartlett has chosen an important sector to focus on. And I now want to share my screen to highlight the recommendations I provided to Robert back in October last year. So let me just grab this. All right, slideshow on. Okay, so 
this was episode, this is episode 23, 29th of March today. Uh, we're getting close to April. Career advice number 429 provided to Robert Bartlett, uh, a cybersecurity consultant, I guess. And, as, and that was on LinkedIn, 14th of October, 2021. This is what Robert posted. Robert posted this on uh, LinkedIn. He's in South, he was in South Africa, Johannesburg, and he was relocating to London. Hi, all. I am moving to London in the next month and I'm currently searching for a cybersecurity focused position. I've been reaching out to recruitment agencies, but don't seem to be making any progress. Does anyone have any tips or advice that could possibly point me in the right direction? He used a couple of hashtags, cybersecurity, recruitment, London, information security. Now, I took this, there's many, many reasons I like this. The many reasons, and one, the primary reason is because in October 2018, I started working with a company called Uncloak. And Uncloak was using uh, blockchain to, for zero threat detection. They had hired or they had on their board a, a team of like, like criminals, a team of uh, ex uh, British military security forces people. And, and it was a really robust team in London. So um, I did that for six months, literally good, good solid six months, seven months, where I just researched the space. So I want to I want to highlight some of that, and I, I gave Robert a, a little bit of a flavor of that. Um, gave him some examples of UK-based cybersecurity firms that I was aware of back then. Uh, even today, I'm not you know there's I think it's there's probably a lot more, but uh, again, I gave him a taste of that. Venture capital and security newsletters, uh, I think those are very valuable in any job search, but in particular in this, you'll see it. I'm going to share, I'm going to share uh, a, a newsletter and just see a random newsletter to see what, uh, what kind of articles that he could find. Uh, and that same thing, VC funding announcements, those are also very valuable information for to see what companies the latest and greatest are raising funds in cybersecurity space. There was a podcast with an intelligent expert, intelligence expert that I referred, I referred Robert to, and it I literally unpacked it last night. And it there's an amazing amount of material, kind of very similar to what the AT and T cyber cybersecurity expert uh, Bindu Sandarisan was mentioning in terms of the hacking hacking as a service, and so that we'll I'll, I'll unpack that a little bit, and then I just go social media approach. How does how would I approach it, or how would I recommend? Robert approaches his job search outside of the norm. So back in back in the day, when as I mentioned, I worked with Uncloak and I uh, was doing some venture capital outreach or investor investor relations type work. Um, I had gathered, and I won't call it a, an informal; it was an incomplete list by all means, uh, but it was robust. I had just I looked at it today or yesterday, and I had compiled sixty three global. I stopped, I stopped putting it together because it's just, first of all, it was it just, it just, there were so many. But second, I wasn't working with them anymore. So I had stopped. But so my list is probably dated, very dated. 63 global cyber sec focused entities. 50 plus were based in the US and the remainder in Europe. Um, the SaaS model, most common in the cloud, just, you know, software as a service kind of thing. Many who combined, if you look, and I, I had kind of marginal uh, notes on this, they combined uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning together with the cloud and sort of the SaaS, SaaS service to try to be differentiate them from the other competition. A lot of them, yeah, it's hard to sort of say this is, there's such, and that podcast I listened to um, yesterday, he talks about there's so many firms that offer various ranges of certain, the office they offer so various ranges of services in cybersec it's hard for one company to be be all end all so the focus ranges from protecting internal work networks the industrial iot you know kind of the equipment that you have in the warehouse going even to that uh, colonial pipeline attack a lot of that's uh, automated uh, pipeline monitoring is, is an automated process so that industrial iot or internet of things and connected devices companies uh, they have uh, laptops, they have uh, soft, they have um, desktops, you know, d d devices, monitoring stations, whatever, you know, so it, it's, it depends on the company. External threat detection, kind of looking at what's going around uh, for you, 
uh, for the company and, and monitoring that and, and looking and, and, and drawing attention to potential threats. Prediction, predicting where the threats could happen from in based on your, your business, your oper uh, uh, operations. Warnings, cyber, even cyber risk insurance. There are companies that focus on cyber risk insurance, which is, it's, I, you know, I'm not an insurance expert either, not, but that's a very niche market. Um, and people who can, uh, I think that I, I haven't seen that many players. There's probably a handful, maybe there's more, but there's a handful that I know of. And, um, you know, so that can be a very niche market and, and certainly if people do that well and cover that well, I partner up with some of these big companies. Just consulting services, giving people advice on, on that uh, the cybersec landscape. SME focus, very small business because a lot of small businesses can't afford to hire full-time people. So there are kind of this cyber experts as a service or you know, I don't want to, I don't know I don't know if there's a name for that, but certainly providing consulting advice for, to small businesses is a niche niche area. And then encryption, just in, encrypting your emails, encrypting your communications, internal, external. So there's a lot of but again, that's my list. By all means, not complete. I think Google and other Crunchbase, you'll come up with a much more robust list, but 63, still, uh, you'll, you'll see a lot of them are still running and, and, and have grown since that, since that day, since that time. So here's some of the examples. I had this list and I went to their websites. So these were the ones I gave to Robert based on my list of 63 or whatever it was. And I, I went to their websites yesterday just to see exactly kind of what they're offering. Dark Trace, based in the UK, AI enabled or artificial intelligence enabled digital immune system in interrupt cyber attacks. So it, it provides um, some, I, I, I guess, you know, if the threat's coming, it, 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 it detects it and wipes it, away, wipes it out uh, like a bug spray, I guess. Garrison, I like the name. It reminds me of a fort, you know, of a, of a of a military term where they're just they're they're waiting there but they they, they called it this hard sec lower complexity non-turing for those folks I'm, I'm not an expert in Turing, but Turing was the the mathematician who during world war ii solved the code for the german uh, cyber codes but so the hard sec and if you read it's really kind of there's a lot of material on garrison's website but they they say we go for the lower complexity complexity digital logic so it avoids the software weak points. I think it's pretty cool because it says, you know, as the software malware, as we as I mentioned earlier, those are the weak points in any software package. And that that's something these guys focus on. We're, we're going more, we're going kind of old school, low tech, uh, finding low tech solutions to, to protect uh, our clients. Immersive labs this is kind of cool. They're they're reskilling or giving, you know, the non-tech tech, the non-tech and tech workers skilling them on cybersecurity, giving them cybersecurity, kind of a consult, kind of that consultant, uh, one of those areas. But uh, that's kind of cool. And it seems like they got some blue chip names in their list of portfolio of companies they deal with. Red Sift, um, communication security. So again, email, communication, how you're communicating internal, external, looking at your communications and the potential weaknesses there. Tessian, they focus on email. And I like this because the human layer security they focus on the, what, the, the using AI. I think they use AI and artificial intelligence to predict. You know, for, so if you write emails, often it, it looks at your patterns. If your network of uh, clients or companies, sorry, your network of employees communicate through email, it actually predicts what's a normal pattern of communication versus some hacker who may be coming in and interrupting your service. So it actually is kind of a. I like that. That's that's uh, consistent with the podcast I listened to. I don't have a name of it, but it, they were talking about that, how they, they using email attacks, because I personally, when I was in Qatar, uh, I got an email saying from the from the CEO saying, can you send fifteen thousand dollars wherever it was? And I'm like, I went right to the accountants of the who helps process it. I said, I said, girls, is it or the two girls? I said, is this? This seems weird. Dr. Dr. Howard's out. The CEO is out of the office. He goes, no, 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 no. This happened before. And so what they do is they cloak the email, make it look like it's your email, your CEO's email, their CFO, uh, and to make a payment. And it looks like it, but there's one letter off, one difference. So that that's actually I love the testing model. Sneak, uh, sneak. Uh, the name my 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 sister had a cat named Sneak, so <laughs> I caught my attention, but 
they assess the vulnerability in software code. So it's, it's very much for coders, software engineers, uh, developer focus. So it looks at the vulnerability in their code. And so this really works with uh, at the grassroots level uh, uh, for um, uh, cybersecurity. And then I, I guess I didn't change my, my, my title, but it's industry newsletters and social media feeds. I think this is more important than just subscribing to a bunch of uh, newsletters. There's a different approach here, and I'm going to I'm going to go in detail how how to interpret this. And I want to share a couple of newsletters with you. I want to share one newsletter, Security Week briefing that I get, just to see the typical what uh, if I was a cybersec person, what meat is on the table, what meat that gets delivered in your daily uh, newsletter. So UKTN. I think anybody in tech in any element should be subscribing to that, if it, particularly if they live in Europe and, and particularly in England or London. So look at their newsletter, subscribe to the newsletter, go to the Twitter handle, UKTN official, Instagram, UKTN official, same handle. Info Security Magazine, that's Twitter, uh, that's their Twitter handle, Info Security Mag, Dark Reading. The reason I, I went to Twitter yesterday just to see, I did some hashtags and just to see. And the reason the Stark Reading came up, they've got 250 followers on Twitter. And there was one name on that that said, Mark Cuban follows this one. So I, I thought, if Mark Cuban's following Dark Reading, I'm going to follow Dark Reading. Tracy Malif, InfoSec Sherpa. Sherpa, she, she, I've been following her since the days I was working with Uncloak. And Tracy Malif is a thought leader in the InfoSec space, OpSec. Um, I, I always remember there was a podcast I listened to and um, I can't remember, he, he said, practice safe sec, which is safe security procedures. And then it was, a, I don't know if it was Tracy Malif, but literally she is a Sherpa. She literally, she calls it the mountain of information you need to know to climb through you know, to the cybersecurity landscape. So InfoSec Sherpa, definitely follow her if you're in, into cybersec, cybersecurity, OPSEC, ops, operation security. And then VC newsletters, great source. Strictly VC tech. I'm going to go through later. I'm going to walk through today's Strictly VC just to see if there's a cybersecurity uh, funding announcement. TechCrunch, Crunchbase, Fin SMEs, and VentureBeat. Those are the go-to for that I go to for tech news. Um, so back in October, Robert, I, I went through just to see you know some of the funding announcements. I think I, I give them a handful, three of them, up to October. I, I could have looked deeper and gone in from, from January through to the October, but I just did a handful. I started with uh, Axonius, technology that helps organizations manage and track computing-based assets that are connected. So back to that industrial IoT, connecting uh, assets, assets that are connecting to their networks. Then plug that data into some 300 different cybersecurity tools to analyze it. They raised $100 million. So I think they're doing something. They got the attention of the investors. They certainly have customers. That that's a significant. But I love I love what they're doing. They're just analyzing, comparing it to, you know, what the, what's happening at the company to what's the tools, and then probably give some analytics around that. Coalition, they raised a tidy sum of two hundred five million dollars. They offer businesses cybersecurity tools and insurance. I mentioned cybersecurity insurance to help manage and mitigate cyber risk. That was in the 28th of September, so very recent, 20th September 2021, uh, Strictly VC newsletter. Uh, the, the Axonius one was in the, was March 1st of uh, last year from Strictly VC newsletter. Deep Factor, based in San Fran. Again, this I, it was fresh, September 21st. They're maker of continuous AppSec or application security observability tools. So I, I guess you know the apps that people use. And you know, looking at the um, you know vulnerabilities in, in that, I didn't look at the deep dive. I didn't go to their website. Mix mode. So I now these last two, these last two, I re, I just went recent. I just just I just go to my newsletters and see. Just this week, mix mode predictive cybersecurity platform. They raised forty five million. There that announcement came on twenty sixth of March, and again predicting where the you know where the risks are in your business vis a vis the threats that are out there. Bionic. Cybersecurity company focused on application layer protection. I mean, this is companies have layers of different. Uh, they bolt on. They've got fintech, accounting, inventory. You know, there's so many the CRMs. These guys are out of Israel. Bionic. This was 
again last week, they raised 65 million. And the Israelis, is, you know, I, I'm not an expert again, but a lot of companies come out of Israel in the cyber sex space. A lot of, uh, well, I guess they've lived in under security issues for a long time, so there's no probably no surprise there. This is the podcast I was referring to. I, I, I listened to it back in uh, September, and I'd sent, I'd sent the link uh, last June. I sent it to Christopher just to let him know, by the way, or not Christopher, to um, Robert. I said, this is a good podcast. I didn't unpack it. I just, I just remembered it was really, really uh, I, it was, I just important, a very important podcast. So Strictly v, VC, that's Alex Gove. They have, it's called Download. And that's part of the newsletter I listen to, but this is their podcast. Alex Gove and uh, Connie Loizos, they are the hosts. And they interviewed Christopher Alberg. He's the CEO and founder of Recorded Future. It's a threat intelligence firm. So this was episode number 60 back in June of last year. And I just, I want to, this is some important things that came out of it. I, get, I, I recommend anyone to listen to, download that podcast and listen to it if you're in cybersecurity. 8.30 mark, incidents. He referred to the incidents response. There are many companies that focus in this area. So something's happened. You call the cyber, cyber sec person. Maybe you got a ransomware negotiation. You need to clean up your computers. You need to recover backups. His company's different. He said at the 10.20 mark, we do not focus on what is going on inside the company, but rather seek to get in the heads of bad guys. We focus on traces they leave behind. So they're... They're looking at the external landscape versus the internal side. And what he said, he said, that makes our job easier. We don't have, to, there's a lot of companies who focus on the internal threats and what's going on inside and helping companies fix that. He said, our job is less complex. We're less complex. We look at what's going on outside. We don't, we, we can be more macro and less micro. And it makes, he, he didn't say macro, micro, but I mean, they're more macro. So it makes their job a little bit easier. They don't have to have all the people and resources and tools and software and, and, and things like that. 11.30 mark, he said, we may actually see where the bad guys hang out. Who is their target? What tool sets are they using? Going back to that earlier, I think it's Axonius, they raised 300 million, or they have three, they talked about the 300 cybersecurity tools out there. So they look at the tool sets that the bad guys are using. So matching those two together, white guys, black, bad guys, whatever, white hat, black hat, good, bad, evil. So what vulnerabilities will they go after? So they're kind of assessing the landscape, the external landscape, what's going on, what's potential threats. 12.30 mark, we focus on three areas. Understanding the adversaries, understanding the bad guys. He names a couple, he gives a couple of names of the bad, you know, the types of, there's government ones, government sponsored, then individual hackers. Tracking networks, they track different networks to see what's happening out there. And then they understand the targets. So what companies could be a potential target, like the Colonial Pipeline? Where are the weakest, where the, where's the most obvious low-hanging fruit? And then they just go through a lot of discussion. He just, he, they just hammer out a lot of different things. 13 till the 13 minute mark till the end. Credit card theft. They have services. Like that hack error is a service. They literally, they verify. So if you buy a credit card as a, as, as a stolen credit card, you, you, there's tools out there to verify if it's still live. It's really cool. Payment systems, Bitcoin, they mentioned it. Very easy, uh, very common used in, um, uh, very commonly used, I guess, in, 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 the, in the hacker world. And that's people always, you know, the governments often refer to that, oh, if you're laund money laundering and so forth. And, he talk, and Connie, Connie Loiseau asked him, she says, you know, what happens to people if, if you know, do they, if they get cheated, if the cheater gets cheated? And he says, there's honor among thieves. They report. They rank the criminal services. <laughs> they give them good rank. If they've been getting good service for their bad, for their bad, for their bad deeds, and they literally rank the criminal services. They, he talked about potential targets, targets of choice versus easy targets, simple, and then simple defense mechanisms, uh, mechanics that people could follow. System updates, minimize your information. He called it the minimize your presence, not your presence, but I can't remember the, how he described that. It was kind of like your, the, the, you know, minimize your footprint, minimize your information that's on the internet. And then just using passwords and two-factor two authentication. And I know two InfoSec Sherpa, Tracy Malley, she talks about three, four-factor authentication. So uh, there's a lot of really, you can be really conservative. But again, this is a really a terrific podcast for those in the cybersecurity space. 
what would I recommend for Robert? Or given that sort of landscape of everything I've given him, what do you do on social media? It's not about him posting and being a social media expert. It's about he's, how he views it, social media. Companies, key executives, and thought leaders. My suggestion would be to follow them on LinkedIn, follow them on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. If they're anywhere else, follow them. Provide relevant, look at their folk, follow their posts, provide relevant comments. This is a Gary Vee thing. This is a Gary Vaynerchuk. Recommends provide relevant comment that's beneficial to them, not to you, but to them. So, and I wrote as applicable. Don't just, you know, yes, liking their posts, that doesn't get you anywhere. It might, if you like them a thousand times, you might say, who is this guy? Get, in the, get into their feed. Let them know you're out there. Let them know, share, repost, forward, cross-reference to similar articles, such as the VC funding announcements, which I mentioned earlier. Newsletters. Subscribe to as many as you can. Find articles that you can share, repost, forward, or cross-reference. Comments. Back to the comments. Repost, share, retweet, forward. Otherwise, let the CyberSec community know that you're out there. You know, it's, it's, it's fine to be working in there, but if you're just, you're just, you know, at the company and they all know what you're doing and how, they, great. But there's experts out there. Let them know you're out there. Let them know you're, you're, you're contributing to the community in some way, shape, or form. That's the, that's for, that's the, basically the conclusion of this, uh, my slides. I'm going to stop sharing these, these slides. Uh, I'm going to just go over here. Okay. I want to share with you now. I want to share the newsletter, two newsletters. One is a security week briefing, just to see. I mean, I, I, I don't know what's in there. I didn't really spend a lot of time because I get it almost daily. I don't spend a lot of time on it anymore. I used to. I used to unpack a lot of the newsletters and share it with the people in the network. And I just want to look at Strictly VC because you saw from last week, there were two funding announcements for cybersecurity. So I'm going to look at today's. I want to see today's to see if there's any anybody, um, you know, if anybody has um, announced recently. So let's go back here. I need to go into my email. All right. All right. So I've got, I'm going to share. Security week briefing. Okay. Let's share. Let's share. For some reason, I'm not able to share. Am I seeing it? All right, I'm gonna stop this. I don't think this is working. Ah, not working. You know, I, I can't see my screen. I figured it out. So here is the newsletter. Uh, it's a weekly. It's called uh, Security Week, Cybersecurity News, Insights, and Analysis. I, you know, threat act. So the, the headline or subject was threat actor, fully automating supply chain attacks. So there's just, you know, there's some information here. Earn your MS in 20 months. Lead the digital defense. So then there's, art, there's sort of feature articles. Uh, the elusive goal of network security, achieving positive outcomes with multiple domain, a sheep in wolf's clothing, technolo technology alone is a security facade, demystifying zero trust, public and private sector security, better protection by collaboration. So there's some articles. Like if I was in this space, and I'd be, I'd be probably following some of these people, you know, following the, the articles. Like So the VC view, so venture capital view, incident response and SOC evolution. William Lin. So there's the contributors. There's a lot of articles there. And then on the right side, the marginals, and I'm going a little fast here. Threat actor, fully automating supply chain attacks. Probably if I was in supply chain or I had clients in supply chain, I'd be looking at that. Researchers hack remote keyless system of Honda cars. I, I, I mean, <laughs> there's that movie with Vin Diesel, the, the car theft, the gone in 66 seconds. That was, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, Estonian ransomware, Garmin Authority. So, you know, I, there's some pretty cool stuff here if you're in that space. I don't know what's relevant. Google issues. So there's probably mid, mixed mode up, ah, mixed mode. I think there were, you know, they were banks, 45 million Series B funding. Mixed mode was in my, my earlier presentation. So there's information there. There's information there that, uh, you know, 
that could be valuable, depending, maybe relevant to him, but maybe relevant to people he deals with on a daily basis, maybe his boss, maybe Robert's boss. I want to share now just today's uh, Strictly VC, the newsletter from today or last night. Okay. Oops. It's kind of a weird thing. Okay. So this is the newsletter, the download podcast, Strictly VC, top news. Okay. So she starts off with massive fundings. Startup that helps teachers. I'm just reading quickly here. Dispatch, last mile delivery. Again, supply chain, maybe the size of security, but no. Okay. Base platform for uh, small businesses, this grow, grocery. Yuko, Yukoi, a three-year-old Zurich startup helps companies manage their expenses. Still no cyber sec. Auto, autonomous driving system startup. Well, that's kind of cool. Zhongmu technology. Okay. Uh, Ka- Causal, a three-year London base. So he's in London. This could be something to share. Spreadsheet startup that lets users collaborate on you know, a financial models. Company aims to help startups early stages, latitude. Pixel, space tech company. That's kind of cool. I don't know what they do, but that's still cool. <laughs> Shoreline.io, a three-year-old incident automation startup. Yeah, not cyber sec. Smarter Sorting, a seven-year-old Austin-based product intelligence company. Machine learning to reveal the core chemical and physical attribute of consumer products. Now, instant payment. That's a fintech. Xab, startup fantasy sports. By the way, there's some pretty cool content for other people here, just not for cybersecurity. Uh, fantasy sports and predictions. Footwear, infertility treatment, healthcare. I, again, I, I, this is a cybersecurity. So I'm going to... There's some really interesting things here. Okay, executive search. So you can see there's a, a wide variety of industries. Weaver, a four-year London-based, again, for London, marketplace and SaaS contract negotiation, probably for homeowners and architects. Wow. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing because there's a ton of information. There's a ton of information for other industries. And that gets me excited. That kind of stuff gets me up at night for when I talk, when I, when I do, see, because I've done over 430 of these career advice submissions, that information there can be relevant to six of the people I, I talked with, or seven, or eight, or two, or whatever it is, or one. Robert's, Robert's in cybersecurity, you know, that's, that's, that's an important field. Today, there was none. <laughs> Yesterday, there was one, or two, two days before. Okay, so there's not much I can add. To the, to the recommendations I provided uh, and expanded, you know, I provided Robert in my, back in October, things have changed a little bit. I gave him expanded narrative around that Strictly VC podcast. I gave him a couple, or I added here a couple of uh, updated funding announcements. And I, I didn't go into that much detail on his, the actions he can take uh, on social media. So that, that I went a little more deeper on that. I did talk about following people, but that is a little bit more deeper. It appears, if you go to Robert's uh, LinkedIn profile, that he recently landed a role as a cybersecurity consultant. Congratulations, Robert, by the way. Uh, with a London-based company that is focused on providing consulting services to the financial services industry. So if you remember my list of 63, consulting advice is very common for the cybersec company. So I, if, if I was them or him or the company, I'd be collab. I'd be a collaboration with some of those uh, consulting companies, see how we can work together if we have cross synergies with clients. But well done, Robert. Terrific. I'm glad to hear that you got on your feet and to see how you progress in the cybersecurity industry. Thank you for watching. Again, I'm your host, Alan Wozni. Have a great day and stay safe.